Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at NASCAR Authentics Wave 2 for 2023. Honestly, another really solid wave. There are only two cars in this wave that are actually from 2023, but as far as it goes, a really nice selection of cars. You've got some good special paint schemes. you got truck Xfinity and Cup, Toyota, Ford, and Chevy. you got got F1 driver. Like, it's a pretty solid wave here. Definitely some good choices. And as I said, we're getting closer and closer. The wave three for 2023 is like all but like one of the cars in that wave is a 2023 car. So it looks like we're getting, you know, closer and closer to just being like solid 2023 waves. But why don't we just hop right into it right away? Start out with Brad Keselowski's King's Hawaiian Pretzel Slider Buns Ford. I love this paint scheme. I said I've already reviewed the 124 of it, so if you want a more detailed review, but I absolutely love this paint scheme. It's so good to have King's Hawaiian in the sport, and this matte bright orange mixed with the matte dark blue just looks fantastic. This is definitely a fantastic choice to put in Authentics. You know, have this on the Walmart shelves, and then people, you know, go over and buy some King's Hawaiian pretzel buns. The pretzel buns are still very difficult to find for some reason. Like, I can occasionally find them, but it's like half the times I go to a Walmart target anywhere and they just do not have the pretzel buns but i kind of hope that sooner or later they'll become a little bit easier to find but this is definitely a beautiful car and going to be a popular one on the shelves okay here's the uh already added up but here's the sticker again got the six king sawaiian brad kozlowski with the little crowns and little uh what do they call them pillars i remember they got all mad on twitter one day and were like don't call them stripes i don't know Next up, we have Eric Almarola's Smithfield Ford for 2023. There's the sticker. This is one of the cars with the blurry decals. Strangely enough, only the two 2023 cars have the blurry decals of this wave. Lionel claimed that they were going to get rid of that or that they told them to stop using two separate decaling like things. I don't know if that's... Hopefully that means they did this. Knowing our luck, it'll just turn into all of the cars will have the blurry decals. We still haven't really got, like, an explanation for this. If it was, like, you know, really to deter custom makers, which is just really stupid if that's the case. But, I don't know. As you can see, the very blurry decals. Cup Series logo always looks terrible. We said these, for some reason, have molded roof cameras, which is nice. <laughs> and then they, they do have the added detail on the side skirt, which is also kind of nice. But decals are just so blurry. This isn't a bad paint scheme, honestly. Like, it's... The Smithfield cars are always just kind of, like, plain. It's the, it's their colors, but just something about the black and white, which is the, like, you know, bronze colors, just never really looked good. A lot of their special paint schemes that have, like, def more, you know, noticeable colors and stuff are usually way better than their standards just because their standard colors just really aren't all that appetizing. For a brand that's all about meat, you'd think they'd have a little bit more appetizing colors. I don't know. Anyways, next up we have Ryan Blaney's Body Armor Sport Water Ford from Atlanta this season. Very boring sticker, like not even like a picture of a water bottle or Body Armor logo or anything, just a 12 Ryan Blaney and a couple stripes. But This is another great paint scheme. I've also reviewed the 124 of this one, if you want a more detailed review. Funny enough, like because I guess they didn't want to put the black roof camera over the P of Snap-on, it has a white like black outline of a white camera for some reason <laughs> that looks hilarious but once again blurry decals you have to wonder if the sponsors like this or not like you think the sponsors would be kind of angry about their cars looking all like wonky like look at how like that that does not look good at all that looks terrible on that left front right there it's not even in like the indent it's so weird that like the good factory is even resulting in some ugly looking die cast good paint scheme said the kind of stormtrooper look as a lot of people called it body armor cars are always good to get in authentics next up we have martin truex jr's interstate batteries toyota from last season interstate batteries is going all around like this year they're on all four cars i know they offered all four i don't know if all four met moq or not there's probably no way in hell they all met moq but i don't know so this Interstate Batteries car always looks fantastic. This new one they've been using is just beautiful. The lightning all around, the green colors, the different shades of green, just a fantastic paint scheme. 
like I said, I'm glad that they finally, as I drop it, I'm glad that they finally decided to go back to their logo on the hood. You know, for, for some reason, like the first couple years of this car it was always like white interstate batteries text up here and then a little tiny logo. And it's just like, use the big logo. And luckily they listened. This was the 70th anniversary of interstate batteries. Kind of funny they didn't get like a, any other sort of special paint scheme for that. I guess you sort of got the Ty Gibbs throwback last year, but still just a beautiful paint scheme. Like I said, this car just looks fantastic. I'm probably gonna have to pick up a next gen 124. I have like I had both the Kyle's Gen sixes, but I should probably get a gen next gen one of this because it is just a really good paint scheme. I forget did this one meet MOQ in both scales? I can't remember if that actually completely meant MOQ or not. Anyways, next up we've got Christopher Bell's Yahoo number 20. These Yahoo cars have been fantastic. Like the bright purple mixed with the bright white to break it up just looks beautiful. They are back this year. Denny Hamlin actually has them this weekend. He won the pole with them at Chicago, the street course. They're just a beautiful, beautiful paint scheme. I've been debating getting one of the 124s of this because there's like, you know, this one, there's the Kyle Busch Sonoma truck win. I don't know if they've actually offered any of the 2023 ones yet. I don't think they've offered Denny's. I don't think they offered Bell's. I don't think they offered Nemechek's Xfinity one. I don't know. Just a really good looking paint scheme. Purple cars are always nice, and this one does it really nicely on top of that. It's cool to get a company like Yahoo in the sport, too. Said very recognizable brands is what I live for. I like the brands, you know, said like this is obviously a brand that a lot of people know and everyone should know, more importantly than like, you know, Recogni on the uh, Kimmy car. But really good choice for Authentics. Next up, we have Kimi Raikkonen's Recogni number 91, Project 91 track house car. This one is definitely going to be very popular on the pegs. This car is probably going to disappear pretty quickly. There's going to be a lot of times where anyone who finds this wave is probably going to find everything else in this wave except for this one. But this one will be popular for the NASCAR fans and for the F1 fans. But yeah, it's like that's, that's my point. Like, who knows what any of these companies are? Who knows what iLock is or Recogni is? That's not recognizable. Body Armor, Yahoo, King Hawaiian, those are recognizable brands. But The Project 91 thing is going really well. This weekend with the, uh, was like Shane Van Gilsberg, however you say that dude's name, like he's actually doing like really well. He's contending so far. <laughs> he was like fastest in practice in the car and he got finished, like qualified third have to see what he does in the race but it's the project 91 thing seems to be going strong now kimmy already came back this year for coda i imagine that curl end up in authentics at some point too they should honestly put all of them in authentics because it'll be really cool i'm already kind of debating just getting all of them in 124 scale because it'll be cool in a couple years when you have a set of like a bunch of different drivers with the same car like that i don't know if it's they've announced if it's racing any other times this year so far Said it ran a Coda with Kimmy. Now it's running at the Chicago Street Course. I don't know if they've announced any other ones. I know, like, Denny Hamlin's for some reason copying the idea with his 67 car, and he's running like an IMSA driver in his that third 2311 car that Travis Pastrana raced earlier this season. But, anyways, a nice car. Next up, we have Daniel Suarez's Slam Chevy for track house racing. This car is a 164 scale exclusive for this wave. This car was only produced in 124 scale. I believe Slam is some sort of foundation or charity organization owned by Pitbull. So this comes out as kind of a Pitbull car. I forgot exactly where this raced. It raced somewhere later in the season. So the track house paint schemes are always good. There's very few times you look at a track house car and think it's like ugly or doesn't look good, but... This one is definitely a very nice one. It's kind of a, f it's it's crazy that this car like almost didn't. I think this car did like DNP in one twenty four two, and then suddenly got saved by somebody. You think the Pitbull cars would be more popular? Like even this year, he had that uh, freeway insurance Pitbull car at Dover, and that's just DNP'd in all scales. Have to see if it ends up in Authentics or not. But you think a Pitbull car would have been more popular than that? But who knows? 
Next up, we've got Josh Berry's Tire Pros Darlington Throwback. Throwback to the classic Dale Jr. paint scheme. They did a good job of recreating it. Instead of Looney Tunes characters, you know, you have... I assume that's supposed to be Josh Berry. And on the hood, you have, I guess, a Tire Pro guy. <laughs> it's a tire instead of... <laughs> but... It is definitely a cool idea to, you know, change all the Looney Tunes characters into, I guess, just their own characters. But these are the throwbacks that are fun. The throwbacks that are extra detail, even if they can't fully recreate it accurately, they find ways to, like, make it as accurate as possible. Because those old Looney Tunes paint schemes are always amazing, so it's really cool that, you know, I don't think anyone was ever expecting to get one of those back. And it's something that they were going to find a way to do it anyways. This car should probably be pretty popular in Authentics 2 on the shelves. <laughs> Being a classic Dale Jr. throwback. Is that always good to get Xfinity cars and trucks and stuff in Authentics? This one has all three series going on. And last but not least, we have Chase Elliott's number 7 HendrickCars.com Spire Motorsports truck. Kind of wish we would have gotten some more fun trucks than just the same old Ricky Hendrick paint scheme. This time it's Chase Elliott. It is funny that like all four Hendrick Drivers have raced the Ricky Hendrick paint scheme now. But it's always a good looking paint scheme. It does kind of work on a truck too, because if you know the paint scheme is basically made from a truck. Like the original version of the paint scheme was a truck for Ricky Hendrick. So I believe it was a number 17, so they actually kind of made the uh seven look like the old 17. Which is cool. I guess that that's more just Spire's fonts, probably more than the Hendrick 17 font, but still, it's just cool to have a similar number and everything on this paint scheme. This has continued this year, you know, there's been the Spire trucks. The funny thing is that, uh, what, a couple drivers have run a HendrickCars.com sponsored Kyle Busch Motorsports truck this year, which is just really hilarious that, you know, in 2023 that we're getting something related between Hendrick and Kyle Busch again. That is honestly one of those, like, funny things, like, five years ago, if you told somebody, like, oh, in 2023, William Byron's going to be driving a Hendrick Motorsports-sponsored Kyle Busch Chevy at North Wilkesboro. <laughs> or whatever. Like, that's just... That just sounds hilarious to say to anyone. Like I said, really solid wave here. Great selection of cars. You got, you know, different teams, different drivers, all three series, all three manufacturers. Just a really solid wave from Lionel here. I will point out right now, I assume there's some people that are wondering what is that Joseph Newgarden Indy car in the background with the Indy 500 paint scheme. That is actually a new promo release of the paint scheme. That isn't the race, you know, the Indy 500 winning die cast that will probably come out like half a year from now. That weekend, they actually made some of the shell cars in order to give to shell guests at the track, and then they sold some at the gift shop. They sold out, like, immediately, and then Penske actually put some on their gift shop on their website. I don't know if there's any still available as of this video, but I assume they sold out fast again, being the Indy 500 winning paint scheme. I have to say, I do love Greenlight's promo 164s, because they, as you can see here, it has a little mini version of the 118 scale box. Like, it is exactly like the 118 scale box, the little tiny version. I love that, because I hate the usual, like, Greenlight clamshell, you know, you have to cut it open with scissors packaging. This is just really cool looking on a shelf. They don't really make that many promo releases, but when they do, I always kind of want to get them just for the box because this is just hilarious to me. But just point that out because I'm sure people ask about it. So this is a brand new wave. You should be able to get it right now. I believe the 2023 waves are starting to show up now. So for a while there, like even I still haven't seen any of the 2023 waves actually on the pegs. Most of my stores still have the 2022 waves, but you should start seeing it shortly. So we already know what wave three is because they revealed the, you know, a couple weeks. At least they waited a couple weeks this time in between the waves. I hated those waves where it was like on the same day they would reveal two waves or like Thursday they would reveal a wave and Friday they would reveal another wave because it's just because of the whole factory differences. So it sounds like, you know, both factories have a wave get sent around the same time. I don't know. But. Remember for all of your other diecast needs, you can go to circlebdiecast.com and if you use the code BWAC, you get $5 off shipping on any order over $30. So go check that if you want anything. 
I'd like to encourage others to say, this has been a review of NASCAR Authentics Wave 2 for 2023. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.